Welcome to the John Gets Games update vlog for May 2021. As always, I have a few things I'll be discussing today, including a couple of general updates uh, regarding how the live top 10 list went, as well as how the rulebook side of John Gets Games has been going. Um, now, I do want to mention that if you'd prefer to listen to this vlog instead of watch it, then you can do so by searching for the John Gets Games podcast wherever you normally listen to podcasts. I'd also like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one and all of the others that I make, then please go to jongetsgames.com. Uh, there you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them give you perks like watching some videos early without advertisements, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, on that note, let's now start with the general updates, and we will begin with a brief Patreon campaign update. Uh, last month was pretty incredible. Honestly, there were 21 new people who joined into the campaign, and only a few people who backed out. So it was a very good month for the campaign, and the overall amount of support has never been higher, and I just really, really appreciate that. So thanks again to the hundreds of people who support the channel, including all of these new people who joined in with their support. Uh, now, moving on to other general updates, I have, um, well, I guess three I'd like to talk about. Uh, the first one has to do with the top 10 list that I put out last month. Um, now, that was a bonus video. It was uh, selected by the contributing producer level supporters of the channel, and it was all about my favorite games to play at two players. Um, now, that's all well and fine, but I decided to try something new where I actually filmed that live. I've been doing live Q&As for well over a year now, and I realized that some of the favorite content that I make for myself is those live Q&As, so why not try to do a little bit more live content? So I recorded that top 10 list live, and something like 600 people uh, stopped by over the course of the hour and a half or so that I was going through it. So that was super cool, and honestly, I really enjoyed it. Uh, a big reason I haven't made that many top 10 lists in the past is because I don't generally watch them myself, and they're not the funnest, most interesting content for me personally to make, but uh, doing it live totally flipped that on its head, because then I could talk about why such and such game was at such and such number, and then answer questions from people coming in live about why, you know, this game versus others, and comparing things, and it was just a much more satisfying experience for me. Uh, I obviously went through and edited it down into a standard video and put that out, which did very well. Uh, so I think I'm going to try to lean into this a little bit more. Uh, right now, I don't currently have any scheduled top 10 lists. It doesn't look like the bonus video for this month will be a top 10 list, but I might try to shoehorn one in anyway. Um, in that case, I'll decide what the topic is. Um, so I'm not making any promises. It might not happen, but it is something I am seriously considering doing somewhat consistently into the future. And whenever I decide to do that, I'll try to put a uh, notice up on the subscription feed um, at least several days beforehand so that people can see that coming if they want to try and plan around being there so that they could talk about the stuff as it's happening. Um, I, I will admit that um, I learned some things in that first live one that I did. Uh, in particular, I was using the Board Game Geek page for some information about the, the game as well as photos. And I think in the future, I'm going to try to plan a little bit better and have photos already um, prepared <laughs> to show the different games. Uh, I spent a lot of time searching through the Board Game Geek database for relevant photos, and uh, that was definitely a learning uh, part for me. But beyond that, it seemed like it went quite smooth, and people seemed to enjoy it, and I enjoyed it, so you know, I may as well lean into it a little bit more. Uh, all right, that is going to wrap up that uh, general update, and now let's move into the next one, and that has to do with rule books. Um, now, you may or may not know that I have been trying to uh, work on the development side of John Gets Games um, quite a bit for the last year or so. I've been honestly trying to push it for like three years now, but especially once the pandemic hit and John Gets Games became my full-time job, I realized I should probably lean into all ways that I can make this a better uh, and more financially stable professional endeavor for myself. Also, I really like board game development and working on rulebooks. So recently, um, as in the past like five to six weeks, I've actually been doing a decent amount of proofing. I've done uh, some rules proofing for a couple of uh, publishers, which was very cool. Unfortunately, I can't really talk about those at the moment. One of them in particular was super cool and I cannot wait to play it. But anyway, I'll stop teasing. Uh, but another thing that's been happening this week is I've been writing rule books like crazy. Um, Thundergriff put out a Matchbox collection uh, Kickstarter. It was a big Kickstarter and it um, went out to distribution I think a few months ago. And it seems like there was some pushback on the quality of the rules. Um, there's definitely some vagueness to some of those rule books, and they hired me to rewrite all five rule books, actually technically six rule books, that come in that pack. Uh, so that was 
exciting, honestly, and I'm in the middle of it. I, I have two more rule books I need to uh, rewrite for that. And um, that's just a very exciting for, thing for me because I do want to expand the development um, board game development side of John Gets Games because uh, while I like making videos and I like talking about games, I love being a part of the creation of games and the, um, uh, increasing the accessibility of games through um, trying to make rule books as good as possible. Um, I've actually worked with Thundergriff a decent amount over the last five months. I wrote the Darwin's Journey uh, rule book from scratch and I've done some proofing work for them as well. And hypothetically, they want me to write um, many of the rule books, maybe um, all of them, I'm not exactly sure, uh, going into the future, at least for now. So that is very exciting. Uh, I honestly kind of feel like I've caught a big break <laughs> and that's, that's an exciting thing to do. Like this seems like a pretty big deal. Um, and you know, I'm hoping that this, um, will be a wave that uh, keeps going. I've done proofing work for, I think four publishers now. Um, and I've only done writing work for two and I, you know, hope this th uh, kind of thing will grow in time. Um, I don't really see it like erasing the video side of John Gets Games, but it's definitely something that I would like to do even more because I find it um, a lot more interesting than I expected. Uh, I always thought maybe I could work my way into being a board game developer, um, you know, playtesting and tweaking and making games better. But it seems like lately the thing I've really been pushing and really enjoying is proofing these rule books and writing them as well. Um, I've never liked writing anything. In fact, I almost said no to writing the Darwin's Journey rulebook when they first asked me because um, I was scared to do it. I thought I would do a bad job and I thought I would hate it. And I decided, you know, you, you miss all the shots you don't take. So I said yes. And I ended up loving working on the rulebook. It was so satisfying. Uh, man, the, the clock goes so fast when you're working on something that you're interested in. And uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to lean into it more to see where it goes. Um, now that's going to wrap up that section. And I guess the final thing to say is, is, um, uh, I, I talked at great length in the last update, uh, one month ago or so. Well, I guess not really a month about being in a rough place emotionally about Jungus games and about a lot of things. And, um, I really appreciate the enormous outpouring of support that came through. Uh, tons of people emailed me directly. There were hundreds of comments that went on that video. It was one of the most commented on videos that I've ever put out there. And, um, yeah, I just really appreciate all of the feedback people gave all of the support. Um, and there was quite a bit of financial support too. I think that's probably part of the reason why the Patreon campaign, uh, did so well over the last month. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate that a lot. And, um, you know, I'd be lying if I said everything is fixed and everything is great. I have good days and the bad days. Um, today is great. Yesterday, honestly, was really bad. And, you know, the day before that was fine. And so I'm just navigating all of this stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm uh, on average doing better, I think. But, you know, who knows? I have uh, uh, blinders on when it comes to knowing how I am specifically doing. Um, one thing that is definitely changing is the, uh, the, the way that we're dealing with the pandemic here in California in particular. Um, I've got both of my uh, uh, vaccine shots. The second one was about a week and a half ago. And that means very soon I'm actually going to be playing board games with some friends inside houses. And that hasn't happened in well over a year. And I think that is definitely going to be helping things overall for <laughs> both of us uh, here in our house just to uh, mix things up a little bit and get back to the way things used to be a little bit and find some sort of new normal, at least for now. I am extremely excited to be playing games with some of my friends in real life. Um, honestly, that's part of the reason why I haven't put out many uh, uh, good games vlogs recently. And it's because I haven't really been playing games online. Uh, I think seeing the light at the end of the tunnel being so big of playing board games with people in person has made me a lot less interested in playing uh, games online in particular in trying new games out online. Um, I sometimes think, oh, maybe I'll see if people want to play games tonight. And then I'm like, you know what? I think I'd just rather not. Like I've played like 600 plus hours of board games online over the last year. And I'm so thankful that that was an opportunity. I had so much fun doing it, but now I'm kind of uh, veering away and I'm like actively avoiding playing games online, it seems, so that I can play them in person. Uh, I'm sure that I will be playing more games online in the future. Um, I've made um, some friends over the last year who I did not know at the beginning of the pandemic, many of whom do not live anywhere near me. So I think the new normal will um, absolutely have some online board gaming, certainly way more than before uh, COVID because I played zero board games online before then. Uh, and I'm hoping to have uh, online games sprinkled out throughout the months. But um, either way, I am rambling now. I think it's time to move on to the next section.
Now that is going to be the shifting shelf where I discuss the new games that I acquired as well as the games that I removed from my collection. Um, let's start with the games that are leaving. Um, the first one is Kubitos. That was a game that was sent over to me by AEG. Um, I actually made a mod for that on Tabletop Simulator and played it several times with friends uh, and had a good time with it. I uh, had positive things to say in the Good Games vlog or Impressions vlog that I put out for that one. Um, and I played it like, I think four or five times now, and I would not mind playing it again in the future, but I also feel like I could also see myself not coming back to it, considering the mountain of other games that I do want to get to in person. And I need to start making some harder cuts because I have so many games in this house right now. We're at a risk of being injured by stacks of games falling on top of us. So I need to try and remove some. Obviously, I'm only removing five here, but either way, that's why Koopy Toast is going. Um, next up is New York Zoo for similar reasons. I played that one a few times, I think about three times, and I enjoyed every play of it. But unfortunately, most of the people I played it with um, were pretty eh towards it, and um, those are the people I usually play board games with. So because of that, I don't think it makes sense to keep that game around. Um, in particular, also for myself, while I enjoyed it more than anyone else I played it with, I, I think it's a fun game. Um, there's a lot of poly Amino games out there, and I would probably rather play many of those instead of continuing to push New York Zoo when my friends weren't as into it as I was. Uh, next up, we have Rome and Roll. Uh, that was sent over to me so that I could do a tutorial for the expansion. Um, I did both of those at the same time, and I did actually get a, a one play of Rome and Roll in. Uh, I made a mod for it on Tabletop Simulator, and I played it once. Um, and it was fine. Uh, honestly, it did not uh, blow me away in that one play. Um, there was some pretty cool stuff going on. I love the dice, these huge, chunky dice with tons of icons on them. Uh, I thought the dice draft in that game was super interesting, but the rest of it didn't really come together in a way that left me excited to keep playing it, so I think it makes sense to move that one on. Uh, after that, there is Southern Rails, and this is a game that was sent to me by Rio Grande to make a sponsored tutorial for. Um, I did that, and I have uh, played that one, and unfortunately, this did not click with us in a way that most of the other Cube Rails games did. Um, this has been probably, uh, well, not my least favorite, but my second to least favorite one that I've played so far. Um, and, you know, saying that, I, I still enjoyed that one play, I think more than some of my other friends. But um, I now have several Cube Rails games in the house, and many more on pre-order, or at least a few more. Uh, so I think I would probably find myself playing those instead of Southern Rails. So I need to start making some cuts there and not just collecting every single Cube Rails game that I can get. Uh, the last one I'm removing is Warpgate. <laughs> I've had this in my collection since... 2018. Uh, this was given to me in person at Essen by um, the uh, publisher, and he did not give it to me uh, specifically for coverage. I actually filmed a uh, tutorial for that one way back when, I think before I started charging, maybe I charged money for that one. It was right around that time, and he was very thankful for making me making a video. Um, so he, he uh, gave me a copy, and I always meant to get around to playing it. It's been sitting on my shelf in my to-play section since November of 2018, and I think at this point I need to just um, by the bullet and say, I don't think it's actually going to get played. Um, it looks cool and, you know, very, uh, light 4X-y kind of game, although it really isn't a 4X game. It's more about, um, area majorities and it's got this really cool modular map of, uh, space, um, conquest. Um, I liked a lot of the ideas. In fact, I did some playtesting for that game as it was being developed. And I think that's part of the reason why I've kept it for so long, hoping to eventually get around to playing it. I've actually heard good things about it from people who have played the final version, but I have to be real with myself. I just don't think it's it's gonna get played, so I should probably remove it from the collection and free up a little bit of space. Now, um, all that being said, I can now discuss the new games that have arrived. Um, I did mention I have towers of games in the house, so obviously removing uh, five is not making a huge dent, but <laughs> I'm trying to do what I can. Uh, now, the new games that I have acquired are Blue Lagoon. Um, I actually bought this one for $5 at a live board game flea market, which was so fun to go to. It was last weekend. Um, obviously, these haven't really happened for the last year because of COVID, but um, there was finally one um, that, again, happened last weekend. Um, most of it was outside. There was a little bit of inside with lots of windows and masks and all that. And I went into it just to see friends. I just haven't seen people, uh, many of these people in over a year. Um, many of them I've actually talked to online, but haven't seen in person. Uh, and it was great to uh, see friends, talk to them, see how they're doing. And I wasn't planning on buying anything, but somebody was selling Blue Lagoon for $5. And I could not uh, say no to that. Uh, I've played Blue Lagoon once. It's a Reiner Knizia kind of root creation sort of game. And I remember really liking it. So for $5, I, I couldn't help myself. I did end up leaving that flea market with uh, one more game than I did uh, going into it. Uh, next up is actually not a game. Uh, it's Iron Clays. Uh, now, these are 
really nice, fancy poker chip type tokens that have numbers on them that you can use for money. Now, I bought the double set. I forget the exact name for it, but it's got two of these big trays and it's got so many of these tokens in them. And if you add all of the money value up that shows up on these tokens, I think it comes in at about 14,000 or so money. <laughs> and the reason I did this is because I am looking forward to playing Cube Rails games with friends in person. And in order to do that, I think I want some better money. Um, it seems like every Cube Rails game does come with some form of money, whether it be paper money or maybe even um, card-based money, but it's just a lot nicer to use poker chip type things. And while we do have some cheaper poker chips here in the house, I just couldn't help but want something nice that I could use every time I play some of these Cube Rails games. And so I splurged a bit and I got this set. Um, I technically have had one um, little tray of the iron clays already that I got for Brass uh, Lancashire that I have, but I counted up the amount of money in it, and I think it was something like six or seven hundred dollars total. And I've played many Cube Rails games where the final scores are like 450, 500, 650, and I was like, I don't have enough coins to actually uh, uh, facilitate that amount of money for many of these games. So I splurged, I have it now, and uh, I'm very excited to play some games with this one. Uh, I might sub it out for more money in other games as well, if I think about it now that I have it. Uh, but in particular, I'm so excited to play Cube Rails games, and now I can do them with fancy money. Uh, I also picked up, speaking of Cube Rails, uh, Mini Rails. Uh, now, this one is a Cube Rails game that I played once, like four weeks ago, and I haven't discussed it in a good games vlog, and I meant to. Um, the reason I haven't is because things kind of happened logistically in the middle of the month that I don't want to go into. And um, by the time it, I was in the position to talk about it, it had been like three or four weeks since I played it the one time. And I was like, you know what? I've already bought a copy. I loved my first play so much. I went out and bought a copy from the Board Game Geek Market. I already have a copy here in the house now. It's it's arrived. I figure I'm going to wait to play it again in person before I discuss my impressions of it. I'll tell you right now that I, I liked it enough to rush out and buy a copy. I think it's a super cool game. Uh, so I will hopefully be covering that one um, in the future. Um, I also received a copy of Red Rising. Uh, that was a press copy sent over to me by Stonemeyer, and it is going to be getting a tutorial made. Um, it went up onto the Patreon poll for uh, May, and it is easily winning that poll. So <laughs> I'll be putting out a tutorial for that one uh, probably next week. Uh, the last game that came in is Umbravia, which is, I think, the first game that has ever been sent to me by Pandasaurus Games. Um, this looks like a really neat game of some hidden decisions and some kind of collective root building. Um, it looks really beautiful. And when they asked me if I was interested in a copy, I said yes, because I knew the pandemic uh, was uh, getting to the point where I could start playing games in person with other people. And this looks like a fun game to play with people. Uh, there are online ways to play it, but either way, I I'm happy to have a copy of it. And I'm hoping to get that one played with people at some point soon to then hopefully talk about it on the Good Games vlog if I end up enjoying it. So those are the five games that I acquired over the last month. And I think it's now time to go into the upcoming schedule. Uh, now I'm only gonna talk about the next three or so weeks because this update vlog is coming out a little bit late. Uh, and specifically starting with week 19, uh, I will be putting out a tutorial for Mosaic. Um, this is a game I just spent the last couple days uh, making a tutorial for. It's essentially done. And it is a really cool um, civilization style game where it's pretty light on the combat and very heavy on on engine building. Um, I was sponsored to make a video, so you know, take my impression with a grain of sand, but I really enjoyed filming this one. In fact, I filmed all of the rules and then I kept uh, filming even more uh, because I wanted to see where the game was going to go. I didn't end up filming a full playthrough, but I, I uh, played quite a bit more into the game and I'm pretty excited to play a full game of that one at some point. The next video I'll be putting out in that week is going to be the live Q&A. Uh, that will be on the 12th, which is a Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and then I'll probably put an edited version of that out later on in the week. And I'm also hoping to put out a, a Patreon-sponsored tutorial for Red Rising, as I mentioned before. Uh, ho I'm hoping that one will go out next week. Uh, in week 20, I will be putting out the bonus video that is currently being voted on by the contributing producers. There's a four-way tie for that video, so I'm not sure what it's going to be. It's possible I'll get to do the tiebreaker from four different options, so we'll just have to see. Um, and I'm hoping to do a Games Radar vlog that week as well. Um, after that, in week 21, uh, we'll be doing another of the Patreon-supported uh, tutorials. It looks like that one is going to be Curious Cargo. And then, potentially in week 20 or 21, I'm supposed to be putting out a sponsor tutorial of a game called Age of Galaxy, which is a very micro 4X 
galactic civilization style game. I actually filmed this one several months ago, and I believe it's going to be going up on Kickstarter around then. Uh, now that's essentially it for the next few weeks. It seems pretty light, but there are a couple of projects that might be slotting in or might not. Um, it just seems like maybe my May is going to be a little bit lighter than April was. April was kind of insane. And um, if it ends up being light like this, then um, I will very likely do a top 10 list, a live one um, of something. Um, I'm also hoping to do another good games vlog. I'm hoping to start playing some games with people and actually have more games to talk about. Um, and I forgot to mention this in the earlier section about the top 10 lists, but I'm thinking about doing live versions of the good games vlog as well. Um, the live top 10 list went so well, I figure it might be fun to um, talk about the games I played recently and then people could ask me questions about it. That seems like fun. So hopefully I'll do one of those at some point in this month. Um, and uh, yeah, that is essentially a look at my current schedule for the month. And that is going to bring this update vlog to a close. Um, as always, thank you so much for the support that came through, uh, in particular from the last video. And looking forward to this month, um, I think there are some projects I am looking forward to actually making. And um, if it ends up being somewhat light, like it seems, that will let me get ahead, which is also a good thing. Uh, so yeah, I think that is going to wrap this one up. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.